very long time, specifically because I didn't want to even, you know, I just didn't want to give it any fucking air whatsoever. But now that we're past that point, um, I guess we can finally watch this. So there's that. So you feel like I'm pushing an agenda? Yeah. What is the agenda? You hate white people, okay? So why don't you get over yourself? Why don't you apologize for your ancestors from thousands of years ago? Because you're white, Louis. Aren't you? Aren't you, aren't you white? Yeah. Uh, you're white, Louis. I got you. Oh, why don't so why don't you apologize for who you are? Because you're a disgrace. For a very long time, nine days, ADHD, ADHD ass bitch, lol. No, this this documentary has been out for a very long time. They just, I guess, published it nine days ago on BBC Select. This documentary has been out. Like snippets of this documentary have been out for a long ass time, like almost a year actually. You're seething now. No, you're, you're seething. Like you're about to start crying. You're the one that's Why crying. are you so triggered? Come on, man. Okay, let's finish this. For several months, I'd been spending time with a new incarnation of the far right. America first, bitch. You think America should be majority white? Yes, yes. It's not a bigoted thing. It's not a white nationalist thing or a hateful thing. America first! America first! A movement spawned online and defined by racism, misogyny, and homophobia. Racism's a new rock and roll, and I'm the biggest rock star of all. Using social media and streaming to radicalize its young audience. Let me tell you a joke. Black lives don't matter. Isn't there some part of you that thinks like that? That's not really where I want to be. No, I actually enjoy racist humor and misogyny. I think that's awesome. I think we need more racist jokes, to be honest. You will not replace us! I think, like, honestly, this is one of those things where it's, like, self-selecting, but also self-eliminating. You know what I mean? Like, if you are if you look at these guys and go, like, that's me for real, like, you're, you're kind of, I mean, it's over. You know what I mean? It, it's, like, good luck. Like, it's not, they're not cool. They're not doing a good job, like, presenting these ideas in, like, a an, in an appealing way. You have to agree with a lot of what they're saying beforehand to come to terms with it and go, yeah, no, that's that's me for real. Especially because like they are so openly awful. Like they are so openly awful and, and so toxic as a brand across the board that, um, you know, there's just not like, they're just gross, smelly, sweaty incels, right? So like I said, it, it's just, um, you know, I, I wouldn't feel too bad about the situation because it doesn't, I mean, these guys, uh, they hit their peak in, in Charlottesville and it's been downhill ever since pretty much. At a time when internet hate is increasingly leading to real-world conflict, I was attempting to understand the motivations and the techniques of a new generation of homegrown extremists. Like, Richard Spencer is probably the most successful version of these fucking fools because, like, um, the dumbasses in, in New York Times and, like, liberal uh, mainstream platforms, like, offered Richard Spencer a platform to be like, oh, a unique take. It's like, bro, you've literally, like, you had a Nazi on your show. The fuck is wrong with you? And, um... Part of the reason why they did that was because he had a tight haircut and wore a fucking suit and um, could keep his fucking mouth shut half the time without sig heiling. Whereas, uh, and then the moment that he did do that, it was a wrap. You know what I mean? Whereas uh, Nick Fuentes tries to do that a little bit, but can't shut the fuck up. So good luck. Um, and uh, Baked Alaska doesn't even try and do that. He's just gross. I mean, they're just gross. Extremists. You did a Nazi salute. I did not do a Nazi salute. You should get the f out of my house. On the front line of a cultural war. Are you kind of making a documentary about me while I make one about you? Well, I can't tell you, but you're dealing with one of the world's most intricate internet trolls. <laughs> hey, mom. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, Shay, get to them some of that. No, no. In Orlando, Florida, outside CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, I was with the followers of Curry, the rising rice. star of the far right. I'm so back. His name is Nicholas J. Fuentes, 
22 years old and a fan of Donald Trump, he's considered too extreme, even for the right wing of the Republican Party, and is banned from their events. I'd like to go to CPAC. You know you cannot, there are no more tickets on sale. There's no more tickets. No more tickets. CPAC sucks. It's gay. They're not conservative. Yeah, we're leaving. We're leaving. Yeah, bye bye. America first. America first. America. Reportedly, bro, imagine being too whack for CPAC, bro. How are you going to be hating outside the club when you can't even get in? And the club is CPAC. Oh my fucking God. Remember, CPAC is where we got that wonderful soundbite. We are all domestic terrorists. Like, that's who CPAC is. <laughs> Weeby said, it. it's like getting kicked out of the anime club. Literally, dude. Duke Freshness, thank you for the five. Get the subs. <laughs> Except like anime, you could just, you know, you can positively enjoy fucking anime. You're still a degenerate, okay? But like these guys are the weebs for racism, okay? They went to the racism conference and the racists there were like, nah, man, you're, you're taking it too far. Barred from CPAC. For the last two years, Nick has run his own event, AFPAC, the America First Political Action Conference, a short distance away. We were the first television crew they'd allowed in to film. Okay, so here we are. This is going to be our conference tomorrow. You're in charge of this, right? Yes. We got our help. Obsessed 20-year-old. <laughs> the tragic outcome and the evident extremism of the event led to the disintegration of the so-called alt-right. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried they were going to show it. They didn't. Um. Many younger members regrouped under Nick's leadership. I'm dude, behold the master race. Always, dude. Always. Always. Louis, how'd you do? Louis? Nice to meet I'm you. Good. You part of the cause? Uh, yes, sir. Absolutely. How did you first find out about Nick and America First? Well, you know, there was a lot of confusion in kind of the right-wing political space at the time, and there were some very nasty people, you know, kind of involved in different movements, different groups, and Nick was, like, one of the only people who was kind of identifying what these guys were doing wrong and how we could build something that was, like, infinitely better, you know? What did you see, Nick, that was, as you saw it, being done incorrectly? I went to Charlottesville to protest the removal of the Robert E. Lee statue. I went to Charlottesville to protest mass immigration. Then you get there and you see people throwing up a Roman salute and, like, you know, you see a Nazi flag and it's like, well, this isn't really what I signed up for. And all these people are... Yeah, the only problem that he has with that shit is that he recognized that the ideology is toxic. Also, notice he's saying Roman salute and not saying Nazi salute. I mean, that's... Are like so you left immediately, right? I mean, you know, you got to throw a couple. Jews will not replace us before you leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, just a couple. Total freaks. They don't like America. They're not Christian. So I mean, what the hell are we really doing here? So America first kind of emerged from that moment of confusion of where does the internet right wing go after Trump and after yeah, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, which is throw up the Roman salute. For Charlottesville. We're almost ready. Okay, great. Getting our um, objectors. Wow, look at that. Hey, Stephen, this is uh, Louis Theroux. Are you How familiar? You there is no mass grift to be made from Nazis. There is, a, there is truth to this. You can only grift on the right as long as you are not identified as a Nazi. The moment that you are identified as a Nazi... Uh, you're still going to have a bunch of very loyal donors that will keep you afloat. That's how a lot of these guys are able to like maintain their packs and shit. Okay. But you have to ride that fine line. You cannot fucking openly, you mean self-identified? Yes and no. Because I think like Richard Spencer, I don't believe openly stated that he was a Nazi, but like you have to be discreet about it. You can't openly fucking, you know, run around and, and run around and say that. But Nick Fuentes uh, is also a, a toxic brand across the board. Yeah, nice to meet you. How you doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. BBC, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Nice. This guy's cool. a documentarian, too. You yeah. are, too? Are you here filming as well? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be doing the documentary. About Nick? Yeah. Who is yours for? It's for America First. For me. So you're funding it? Mm -hmm. Very cool. That'll be nice, because then you... Of however many times that they've been fucking owned uh, publicly. <clears throat> You know, thank you to all the liberals that uh, played a role in the Red Scare so that the actual antidote to the contradictions is considered to be uh, even less acceptable by the mainstream than this kind of shit. That's how I see it. To 
his young fans, Nick is an icon. Many of them have come up socializing via online video games, immersed in the culture of the internet. How would you characterize what Nick is doing? Is he on the rise, do you think? He has become, in only four years, the most successful dissident political movement in modern history. And he has the capability to get thousands of young people to show up in any state in a moment's notice. How is he doing that? He's in that gaming and meme culture, right? And he uses the same type of ironic jokes that they do. So that's how he's able to attract the younger crowd. <laughs> you seem young. Are you at university at the moment? Are you I am, You're yes. a student? That's correct. It's important to get young people politically engaged. That's crazy. He, he says based in Groiper. Um, so that's why he's captivating people. Adapt plays. Thank you for the tank of the subs. To control not only the direction that the country is headed as a whole, but especially the direction that the conservative movement is headed in. Are you a gamer? Is that, is that part of what's going on as well? I think that's generally something that would fit into the personality of a lot of the attendees of this conference. I think, you know, we generally like to game a little bit of, uh, you know, Fortnite, Call of Duty here and there. Sure. How did you connect with Nick? We used to play Fortnite together. Uh, you and Nick? Yeah. For I, real? It's the new golf course. Through Trump and through politics politics and stuff we kind of had similar ideas bro you can't be mathematically less fuckable than these guys my man said we met through Fortnite. it's the new golf course bro please have like just a shred of self-awareness dog holy fuck 14 year olds would hear what he just said and go oh dude no way that guy fucking sucks they would say aiden ross better i show speed better you and they'd say uh hold this l you rizless motherfucker that's, uh, and they'd start Fortnite dancing on them. Ideas and stuff, and we just kind of became friends over the internet, over Twitter. Alongside his gamer following, Nick has also made inroads in the political establishment. Among the attendees was former Congressman Steve King. One of the things that Nick and America First have been criticized for is being racist, right? I mean, that's basically, he's accused of being a white supremacist, an, an, an anti-Semitic. What we believe is that we are created by God. <laughs> and all of I mean. I mean, Steve King, like he, he literally is a white supremacist. Okay. Steve King, the least racist Republican from Iowa, you know, all of us created in his image. And once you accept that, then there's no room for any racism, racism whatsoever. And the interaction I've had with the young people that are here, this is the, right, and that image is what energy core that will put America back on the rails again, because so much of her has run off the rails in the last year. The event was sold out with around 300 attendees and thousands more watching live online. A young underground bringing the taboo culture of the darker parts of the internet into the real world. Exactly. 300 attendees, bro. Think about that. Ultimately, you have to remember, like you have literally a fucking sitting representative attending and you can only get 300 motherfuckers. Like you can only fill up a 300 person room. Okay. Remember that shit. That's important. I could fill out a fucking arena, not just with the amount of people that are watching currently without a single fucking uh, seating, uh, seated representative. So understand. And I'm a fucking dumbass. Like I, I, I bring nothing to the table. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a himbo. Okay. And, and my political beliefs are unfortunately not exactly well represented in politics in the same way that like lighter versions of Nick Fuentes' political beliefs are. Okay, bro, we're not going to leave our house. Yeah, I mean, that's what you think, but shut up, Hassan Abi. He had 1,200 people there. <laughs> Oh, the saddest part about this, the saddest part about this is like the, his little fucking groped up fan base, the, the David, De, uh, the peepees of the world that are like young David, the peepees right now, but they're going to turn into old David, the peepees that, uh, that want to, you know, ultimately have gay sex with Paul Pelosi and get fucking hammered in the head are coming in here to defend it. <laughs> what the fuck? You get more people than 300 people at a meeting greet. Yeah, literally. Listen, for all of you right now. For all of you right now that are watching, that are like in this community, because I'm sure a bunch of you groped up shouties are in here right now, okay? You look very cringe to the rest of the world. You might think I look cringe to the rest of the world as well because of the Discord circles that you're in where people are like, oh my God, remember when Hassan like fucking had a dead dog? Lol, like whatever. I'm telling you, okay? That's not how it seems, okay? The shit that you care about, the shit that you talk about, the shit that you believe comes across as unhinged, mentally unhinged to everyone. And honestly, even fucking racist ass Normans who feel that way are right. They're correct when they say you're mentally unhinged. So I'm telling you right now, you can save yourself, okay? But the only way that you could do that, and there are plenty of people in here that are making fun of you now that probably were on that same pipeline, okay? Originally, back in like 2014, 2015, 2016, okay? There is an opportunity for salvation for you 
yet, okay? Go to the gym. Stop fucking frequenting these uh, internet circles. Build better habits for yourself. You can unironically change your life for the better, okay? Take a shower. Figure out how to groom your uh, face, okay? Figure out how to, to, you know, get a haircut that suits your head. Figure out how to get a beard that suits your face. Do not want to become a 42-year-old divorced dad trying to break in to uh, Nancy Pelosi's house to have gay sex with Nancy Pelosi's husband. You don't want to be that guy, okay? Do not want to be that guy, but you are on the pathway towards being that guy, okay? David the Peepee is you, is your future. You're staring into the future right now when you think about people like that, okay? All right, let's continue. I see what's going on in the country. I don't want to listen to some of these five-hour podcasts about policy making. I want to get in front of somebody and say, it's America first, bitch. Such a badass, dude. America is a Christian nation. America ceases to retain that English cultural framework and the influence of European civilization if it loses its white demographic core and if it loses its faith in Jesus Christ, then this is not America anymore. And I know some people aren't going to like me saying this, I'm sure you all are going to love what I'm about to say. People watching at home are not, some of them are not. It's controversial. Well, it's really, it's true, but it's something that you can't say anymore. White people founded this country. Wait, what? No. I mean, I say it all the time. What? The difference is like the energy that I put behind white people founded this country is that, you know, yeah, it, it's factually correct. And the, the foundational basis of American state building revolves around, you know, indigenous genocide and, and slavery. So he's factually correct. That's the difference between someone like myself and Nick Fuentes. He's factually correct when he says white people founded this country, right? That's true. Founded on the principles of white supremacy. He thinks that that's a good thing. I think that that is abhorrent. <laughs> That's the difference. That's the difference. For all the right-wing nuts, it's all love, but it took me till 2018 and one year out of the army to start realizing those talk talking points I subscribed to were not only wrong, but also hollow. It took me realizing, and this is going to sound bad, that people on the left are humans who want the best for America, and that means being able to criticize our society and try to make it better. There are a few more differences, like you felt the touch of a woman, but yes. I mean, dude, there are fundamental differences between me and Mr. Manlet over here, okay? Obviously. I'm just saying that, like, as far as what he's stating, everyone can say that white people founded this country, because it's fucking true, but it's what you do with that information that matters. Like, uh, the American state was built upon indigenous genocide and human slavery, human suffering, you know? You can think that that's a good thing, like Nick Fuentes does, or you can think that that's a bad thing. <sighs> this country wouldn't exist without white people. And white people are done being bullied. It is funny that his narrative is like, like a high school school shooter, though. shocking to hear Nick's vision using lies and distortions to promote an ethos of white identity and racial division. The following day, Nick released a tweet to show that one of his speakers had been a sitting congressman, Arizona's Paul Gosar. Yep. Outside of its annual AFPAC get-together, Nick's movement exists largely... Paul Gosar is so funny because it's like obvious that he has like a bunch of fucking based epic red pilled groipers in his staff that's why he's like 700 years old and like routinely will post like soy jack memes and shit he's just like a senile man whose entire family hates him okay that's the that's the young whippersnapper 
in your fucking movement. That is your, your guy. That's your guy in the hole, you know? That's, that's, your, that's your ride or die, brother. You're fucked. As an online community, sharing ideas via message boards, in jokes, and live streams. They're storming the Capitol right now? Really? Dude, I'm at, I'm at the Capitol. One of Nick's closest associates is a self-described internet troll named On Team Gionet, better known as Baked Alaska. He's like, I'm at the Capitol. Fuck, I'm missing out. Other side, everyone, Patriots, let's go. Other side of the building. Baked Alaska was at the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021, where he live streamed himself from a congressional office. Hello, U.S. Senate. Yes, we have a fraudulent election. I would like to report. Yeah, we need to get our... Dude, he's so epic and funny. He's so epic and funny, dude. Epic chunk is 500. Good one, dude. Fucking got him. Yeah, they arrested him for being cringe. <laughs> the cops are like, you're going to jail, motherfucker. Why uh, not storm in the Capitol for being just insanely cringe, bro? Boy, Donald J. Trump in office. We got over 10,000 people live. Baked Alaska is one of your favorite desserts. <laughs> Yikes, dude. It, it's literally mid. It blows my mind that Will were with Baked Alaska at BuzzFeed. Yeah. Will, uh, back when Will was at BuzzFeed, Baked Alaska was also at BuzzFeed and he had not like lost his mind yet. Um, they did like some funny uh, sketches and shit, which is like really weird to recognize. Like they did like Tim and Eric style sketches. One of them, one of them they did was a uh, bagel safety video, if I remember, but he wasn't like unhinged. You know what I mean? He was like, these things can happen. You know, these things can happen to anybody. Let's be real. Like read his chat. Didn't he try to push management to support BLM more? I don't remember like his political background. I just remember him being like, not, I don't know. I, I, he was just not the person he is now. Oh, read his chat. Why are you saying ice viewer in his chat? He specializes in confrontational live streams. And was facing a case of assault using pepper spray. Fuck you, dude. Had arranged to meet at his house on the outskirts of Phoenix, Arizona. Knowing of his fondness for provoking those he views as political enemies, I would be attempting to maintain my composure. Hey, we're in the right place. Yes, you are. How do you do? I'm Louis. Hey, my name's Nick. May I come in? Yes. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? How are you? Nice to see you. How are you it's doing? Alaska. Should I call you Baked or Tim or? You can call me Baked. Yeah. Baked is all right. How are you yeah. doing? Now I've already clocked that we're being filmed. Yes. I, I thought that might happen, and it's kind of part of what makes this interesting, right? Is it going out live? Uh, no. So is it just for your film? Yeah. Well, we just don't trust journalists, dude. <laughs> like. <laughs> Um, journalists have been my worst enemy. They suck. How am I supposed to trust the media when you have mainstream media literally pushing out narratives that I'm a neo-Nazi, I'm not a Nazi, guys, of course, calling me a racist, neo-Nazi, etc. So how am I supposed to trust the media? Like, That's crazy. Where'd they get that one from, I wonder? So strange of the media, which I fucking despise for the most part, to get one thing right, I guess. You seem like a cool guy. You're still part of the mainstream media, though. You were at the Capitol Insurrect. I wouldn't call it an insurrection. What would you want? Uh, Capitol riot. But the riots? An insurrection would be something that people planned. Hey, look, there were people there that did some dumb shit. I wasn't violent. I didn't vandalize anything. I am very right-wing, obviously, and I believe in, you know, America first, but don't, I, I want nothing Thing to do with any sort of violence I'm not you do consider yourself very right wing that is fair far right i mean i i would <laughs> say probably yeah like people will say <laughs> it's supposed to be like nationalist yeah i'm a nationalist you know okay christian yeah i'm a christian nationalist what do you think about the jews uh i don't really like them <laughs> authoritarian would you say your beliefs are alternative to the right yeah yeah uh, alternative to the right, yeah. Far right as like a smear. And I used to be like, no, 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 I'm not far right. But I mean, I just don't really care that much anymore. Baked had grown up a child of Christian missionaries in Alaska and pursued a career doing viral journalism in Los Angeles. Later, he'd created memes and performed social media stunts in support of Trump and the far right. Even your haters would describe you as a, as a social media genius or a social media innovator. No, they yeah, wouldn't. I agree. Oh yeah, I mean, I worked for BuzzFeed as- No, they wouldn't. No one would consider him to be a genius of any fucking sort, dude. 
I mean, he's just buttering him up, but There's still. social media strategist. I did this. Which same is a pretty liberal kind of um, more celebrity focused outfit, yeah. right? Yeah, very liberal. You were at Charlottesville. You were chanting, you will not replace us. I believe white people should stand up for themselves, but I'm not right. like a white supremacist or nationalist or anything like that. Um, I don't only want to be around white people. I think I would I like to be about. around a majority of white people, uh, similar to how our nation was founded. It was about like 75, 80%. I think that's fine because I want our country to stay homogenous. But Just, the ones who weren't white were in chains. Well, I, I don't uh, support slavery, so. This little living room where I watch Why, America why have we got first. Nick Fuentes up there? That's my favorite show. I was watching it before you guys came in. For real? Yeah. Nick is the most genius political mind I've ever come across. In what way? <laughs> um, he just speaks exactly how it is from the heart, and he... Yeah, he's not a Nazi, by the way. He just happens to say that his favorite show is a Nazi show that exclusively revolves around promoting Nazi ideas. But, like, not a Nazi. I mean, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. Not a Nazi, obviously. I mean, come on. Come on! He doesn't care if something's going to uh, be seen as politically incorrect or anything like that. He just uh, truly speaks the truth. He's only 22 and he's like, I'm ready for him to be president. Like, I know, I know 100% Nick's gonna be president. You can clip that. <laughs> Steven, how are we doing for your documentary? Are you getting what you need? Yes, sir. Mainstream media is viewed as the enemy. Uh, of course, yeah. You know, type in Louis Thoreau and the first thing that comes up is like, Louis Thoreau is a neo-Nazi or, you know, whatever. It's not nice for that to come up as the first result. Does it say that on Wikipedia? Yeah, look, here. Tim G&A, more commonly known as Baked Alaska, is an American neo-Nazi, anti-Semitic conspiracy theorist. You've tweeted that Jews control the media. Yeah, I did that. You can see how that would be um, anti-Semitic. I think anti-Semitic is sort of like a made-up term. Like, I think Jewish people... <laughs> Dude! Dude! He's like... <laughs> Oh, this is so good. He's like, well, here are ev here's everything that the Nazis believe. It seems like you believe all of those things. Why are you not a Nazi then? He's like, ah, I don't fucking... I don't. People think they can't be criticized. If you said white people suck, that's literally an acceptable phrase in today's society in America, okay? If I said Jews suck, oh my gosh, oh, you're anti-Semitic. I don't think any group... Of yeah, because white people is a made-up terminology by races for the most part, to show proximity to power. That's it. That's the difference. Nobody's like, I'm white. Every I'm white. But everybody, every white person in America, for the most part, knows where the fuck they came from. It's not the same as being black. Talking about white people, you're not talking about, like, Irish people or anything like that. Talking about white people in general. Human jerky, thank you for the tank of the subs. But people should get a free pass. I disagree with that. Exactly. What do you disagree with? Well, the idea that, uh, that the same rules should apply to all races, like where, where historically white people have been in, in power. You know, it's to, a lot of it is to do with how power sits. If you're doing comedy or people are getting roasted. I, I honestly think he might be too stupid to recognize he's a Nazi. Like Nick Fuentes, I think, is at least like smart enough to hide his like legitimate perspective, but like gets really horny and openly fucking says his desires. And it's very easy to catch him doing that. But, um, but like, I think he's just really dumb. Like, I think Baked Lives is just fucking stupid, dude. Like, doesn't realize that the top of the hour is here and that there's a 60-second ad break coming. You know what I mean? Doesn't realize that, like, if he no longer wants to see those ads, all he needs to do is subscribe, which he could do for $5 or for free. <laughs> oh, you know that was good. Shut the fuck up. That he could just also get gifted a sub. That was a solid 9 out of 10, maybe 10, 10. I snuck that in so well, no inflection change whatsoever. Absolutely disastrous, okay? <sighs> now, of course, like I said, Papa Husky, thank you for the five gifted subs. If you get gifted a sub, you can also avoid it. Like Human Jerky gifted, 10 gifted subs, allowing 15 people to no longer see the motherfucking ads. Turbo Killer, thank you for the five gifted subs as well. Here's the woman ad break now. God damn, that shit was fire. I, I think you should be able to use any means necessary. I mean, this is a great song. Have you seen this one? One more time, oh, one more time. I just wanna make fun of a little roll and I'll feel fine. Oh, one more time, oh, one more time. Thank you, Ebergon. Thank you for the tank of the subs. Arc, uh, Arc to Freedom, thank you for the take of the subs. Yo, that shit goes hard as fuck on mute, dude. Twitter. Just kidding. It literally doesn't even go hard on mute. I 
made this. Uh... Bro, this is literally oh God. Racism and bigotry is just the only tool motherfuckers have when they have no skills in comedy. They can't do a funny. This is what they do when they wait. When they can't do a funny, this is what they do. I, it's just like this is so bad that I don't even think anyone should get mad at it. I don't. I don't. I think like he is so demonstrably awful and cringe that most people would not even get mad at this shit. Like the the most unhinged liberal would look at this and go, "Yeah, okay, dude, you're a fucking loser. Move on." How are they so creative for slurs but not songs and other things, brother? That's it. They use all of their fucking points. They used up all their intelligence points on uh, clever ways of coming up with new slurs one time. And then never again. There is not a single fucking new slur out there. Remember that a lot of the stuff that right, the, the right talks about, a lot of the stuff that they uh, complain about, a lot of the grievances, a lot of the talking points, and also all the racial slurs are all from like 200 years ago. Like they used to be way, way better at like making movies and art and shit too. Like, I mean, think about Birth of a Nation, right? I think white people lost all their movie making, movie magic powers uh, unironically. Like they lost all their creativity. Racist white people fell off big time, dude. Birth of a Nation was so fucking powerful, it literally ignited the, the reignited the clan, okay? They got nothing now. Now, now they got Dinesh D'Souza making 2,000 mules. When I got banned from Twitter. <laughs> oh, one more time. I didn't do nothing but I'll pay the crime. I didn't do nothing but I'll pay the crime. I, I don't think I had heard that <laughs> Nice. I'm glad I got to uh, show that to you. What, do you remember what it was that got you uh, kicked off Twitter? I, I mean, dude, these days you, you don't really have to say much. And I think I said something like, ban all Muslims from the U.S. And then... <laughs> you wrote that on Twitter? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because it was funny. I, I don't support any immigration. You know, we can't have an unlimited amount of people here. <laughs> oh! He said, I don't want any immigration. Brother, you're from Alaska, Okay. Like, your, your American citizenship is questionable, okay? Calm down. You got Alaska in the name, dog. But if you want to ban all... Yeah, he's like, it's a joke, but I also believe it. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. Go back to Canada, bitch! Yo, you are literally Canada, okay? I'll say it. But also, yes, it is hilarious that he, he basically is saying, like, oh, man, fucking... Uh, it's just a meme. Like, I don't care about Muslim immigration. But also, don't immigrate, actually. Immigration. Why did you mention Muslims specifically? It was responding to Trump's uh, immigration ban because a lot of the Muslims are higher risk for, you know, terrorist attack. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Bro, his kind, white supremacist, anti-government, uh, domestic terrorists, like literally, like his homies are the biggest number of, of terrorism doers on U.S. soil. Like, since 9-11. 9-11, Islamic fundamentalists got a big leap, okay? They were like, oh, shit, we're fucking riding high right now, brother. You know what I mean? And then white fundamentalists, like, Christian Sharia supporters were literally like, nah, dog, you don't understand. This is my country. I will fucking kill way more Americans. I live on this soil. It's crazy. Like, literally, with the exception of 9-11, okay? There has never been a moment on U.S. soil where white supremacists have not been the leading domestic terrorists. From Oklahoma, the Oklahoma City bombing, to literally every other instance of domestic terror on U.S. soil, okay? With the exception of, like I said, 9-11, which, you know, if you consider George W. Bush's involvement, then, you know, maybe you could chalk that up for the fucking wasps as well, okay? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take the credit away from Osama bin Laden, okay? That is erasure, and I will not be participating in that, okay? I will not be participating in that kind of erasure and say that, like, the the entire Saudi operation was kind of still uh, backed and, and uh, propped up by American uh, statecraft, American State Department uh, interests, and, and also the British uh, government. I'm not going to say that, okay? I will not be erasing people of color voices, exactly. But that, you could see that was a kind of divisive and provocative statement. Yeah, of course. That's why I tweeted it. <laughs> it was a puzzling formula playing at being racist while also Islamic fundamentals are one hit wonder to be honest straight up so being racist and accusing critics of lacking a sense of humor master of this approach was, of course, Nick. 
Since I'd last seen him, I dug further into his broadcast. His agenda was white Two nationalist. Two hit, three hit wonder. Name. The people that are coming to replace us in our own country. You think they, they really like white people? They really care about white people? Dude, white people didn't want to give credit to a brown person so fucking hard that Tower 7 came down on its own, okay? That honestly is like American uh, American white fundamentalists being like, nah, no shot, bro. No shot, okay? We are not letting these motherfuckers take two towers down. We're going to take the third ourselves, okay? Straight up. What is this? Osama bin Laden? You mean Tim Osmond? Wait, what? The early 9-11 Internet and I like retarded if you're in a wheelchair, if you're black, if you're Muslim, Jewish, if you're Jewish, if you're a Zionist, if you're Jewish, if you're in a wheelchair, if you're Jewish, it's all protected. Hmm. Following on from our encounter in Florida, he'd arranged to meet in his hometown of Bro, he like <laughs> Nick Fuentes keeps bringing up like normal shit like the American Disabilities Act, like accommodations and stuff. And then just immediately just says, nah, it's bad. Once again, it, it is like you have to agree with him to think that like what he's making is a good argument. Like you have to have so much resentment in your fucking heart that like you have to legitimately feel like white people have been fucked over by everybody else. Like you, you literally have to have all the energy put into that, that white grievance, white identity politics to agree with him because he's so fucking insane. Like he does doesn't even uh, like he doesn't even make an argument as to why that shit sucks okay like he's not even trying to appeal to people beyond people who are already there chicago <laughs> i was curious to find out how a disturbing figure like nick was cutting through to a large and growing audience of impressionable young men in the past a voice like yours would have had to come up through a tv network or some kind of um, news outlet right right but you right. built your voice and your platform using social media would that be correct so i mean i basically have a very intuitive sense as, as all generation z do on social media smartphones and the information ecosystem you know the mechanics of it are are pretty straightforward you know i mean you create content you share it you hope that people notice it and that they'll uh you know that that's what social media is at that time, then, you were a YouTuber, in a sense. I was. I was a YouTuber. Like PewDiePie? Like... Yeah, I am like PewDiePie. <laughs> you dropped out of college. Were your parents pushing back at all? Thinking, like, what's Nick doing? He's just in the basement recording, like, homemade videos. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, they pushed me. They said, you know, what are you going to do? You got to get a job or go to school. You got to have a plan. And I told a girlfriend. them, why don't you just give me one year to explore this? And if it works out, then I'll keep doing it. And if it doesn't work out, then I'll abandon it and I'll get a job or I'll go back to school. And uh, it worked out. <laughs> Yeah, his parents nice failed him four. big time, Usually bro. Usually I would have the top down. Get a little ice cream. See, I'm, I'm a simple guy. Am I a sick guy? Did someone say you were a sick guy? Yeah, people, well, I mean, they, they yes. imply it. Hate monger. Yeah, I'm not a hate. I'm a love monger. I'm out here mongering love. Really proves your point that all these right-wing grifters are all embarrassed actors and entertainers. Yeah. This dude could have, if he just like hit it big on Roblox, he probably wouldn't be fucking doing this shit right now. You know what I mean? But he's like, oh man, I'm, mm, I'm going to do this instead. Okay, bro. Have fun. Fucking stupid. <laughs> in one of the pieces of footage I'd come across, Nick had talked about our meeting in Florida and his impression of me. Alexander says, what's Louis Theroux like? Is he doing a documentary with you? He is. You know, he has the same problem that all journalists do. He's, he's pretentious, you know? Here's a little piece of advice. It's so funny. It's like, bro, so are you, though. Like, what do you mean? You are so incredibly pretentious. For to, to be a good investigator, you got to be humble, okay? We may talk about Jewish power, and we may talk about black crime, but that doesn't mean that, you know, I wake up every day animated by racial hatred. You know, I mean, that's just retarded, frankly. So, and pretentious liberal journalists either are, you know, too arrogant to understand that, they think they know it all or whatever, or they don't even care, and they just have their own agenda. They've got their world. Yeah, bro, I think, like, you eating ice cream is not on the fucking high on the list of things that people care about, you know? 
Like, it, it, it's not like you're fucking eating ice cream on your show. You're making Holocaust uh, analogies. You know what I mean? While simultaneously claiming that, like, it didn't fucking happen. <laughs> no wonder they're asking about your uh, political perspective. That's the thing. That's the thing that people care about. That's the reason why people watch. It was, it was almost a little bit disappointing. It was almost a little bit disappointing. It's your parents' place, am I right? Uh, yes. Are your parents around? No, no, they're not around. Back at his parents' house where he lives, recording his streams from the base. Oh my god, this booger eating motherfucker literally streams from their parents' basement, dog. I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. It's literally the meme. He lives it. No fucking shot, brother. Oh my god, dude. Stop. Are you fucking joking, dude? Holy fuck. Basement. I decided to challenge him on his comment. I saw the monologue you did about me. Yeah, I did do a I, monologue yeah. about you. I just want you to know that I fundamentally disagree with what you promote and with what you stand for. But I'm here because I'm curious about you. Right. Does that make sense? Totally. You disagree with what I stand for. I disagree with what you stand for. But I tend to operate with people. I'm not gonna lie. I did hate Louis for doing this doc on them, by the way, at the time. Like, I, I think Louis Thoreau is, is a fascinating person like he's not you know i think he has interesting documentaries because he has a very good way of identifying interesting people okay but uh, the reality is that like no he does not have like a like a well versed world view he's just like kind of the perfect liberal to do the job um and originally i thought that it was like uh I, I, did you criticize him for platforming no because like it's still fucking louis thoreau you know what i mean but i also didn't but I also didn't watch it, you know? I didn't watch this documentary. It came out in February this year, and I didn't watch it. The reason why I didn't watch it is because, like, I refused to even shine a light on the behavior of these uh, people because it had not reached a level of prominence that I consider, uh, that I, that I consider that, like, needs to be addressed. You know what I mean? He was shooting this last year, all last year, and he released it in February. Not enough clout is correct. Yes. I don't understand why people will, uh, use that as, like, a negative. Yes. I will only talk about people like this that I do truly think are, are, you know, spreading really awful, dangerous ideas in a country like the United States of America that is kind of built on those ideas and built on that social conditioning. If they reach a level of prominence that I think is, is becoming, um, dangerous, there is no way that I would have, and I haven't talked about, um, uh, this person in particular, despite, uh, despite me being very knowledgeable about the things that he was doing for a long time, you guys, if you've been here for years, I usually refuse to talk about him. Yeah. Well, I got to step out of the stream every now and then, otherwise miss some stuff until it becomes mainstream. Yeah. But I'm not interested in fucking like having everybody learn about this shit ahead of time, unless it becomes, unless it becomes mainstream. I think it's better that you don't fucking learn about this shit all the goddamn time in good faith well, i wonder if it's helpful just to almost like put the cards on the table in a way right sure. because you've been characterized as white nationalist right repeatedly right. sometimes you come near to embracing the term and all through so so much of your commentary is an idea of like white racial identity is being mm. core to your belief system i've not advocated on my show for a whites only nation or for ethnic cleansing or for this idea that non-whites cannot participate in american identity or america what you do think is that america America should be majority. Yes, yes. I saw a video of you. I looked like an undercover. Record. It was. I know what you're talking about. Where you said, uh, someone said, you think um, mixed race relationships are like bestiality. Mm -hmm. and, you, and your reply was, well, they're both degenerate. <laughs> Yeah. This was like four years ago. It was a private conversation. But, you know, I was playing devil's advocate about this idea that interracial... Such a pussy, dude. Oh, man. He is such a bitch. See, this is the issue, okay? He can't fucking say it. He knows he can't say it. He's not there yet. Society's not there yet. So he is so immensely cucked that when asked uh when asked about this question he has to be like oh man i was just playing devil's advocate shut up bitch yeah exactly have fun with that dude have fun with that fucking movement at least when someone confronts me with my fucking perspective with my beliefs i can openly state it you know what i mean like when someone's like bro you're fucking teetering on the border of socialism i'm like yeah i mean i i don't have an issue with that yes 
I do. I do think that it would be the world would be better under a different organization of the economy. I, I but he can't. He can't fucking say it. He just has to be like, oh, he, he, I I know I said it was degenerate to say that like uh you know a, a white woman sleeping with a black man is akin to a white woman sleeping with a dog. But like uh, I was just doing devil's advocate. <sighs> relationships are totally like the best idea i happen to be very old school i'm very please take out this piece of fucking shit next no i'm not touching him still no you can be armed with the information about his background but no fucking way dude are you kidding me he is nowhere near a level of prominence that like deserves uh debating very traditional oh, shock. it's not a value that i have that that's a bro i told you guys I told you guys already, like, uh, you know, there are people I'll debate. Fucking Ben Shapiro, Steven Crowder. You debated him before? I know, you fucking idiot. I know. And it was an awful idea. It was an awful, awful idea. He had an even smaller presence back then. And it was a last second fucking swap out. And my, my, my better judgment at the time was to not do it, not go through with it. And yet we still did it. And like, regardless of how well uh, the the end of that conversation was or whatever the fuck, it doesn't matter. Do you live with your mom too? Yeah, in my house that I own, you know? I think it's a little bit different than this man's situation. Yeah. <coughs> A good thing or even necessarily something that's appropriate it's not a bigoted thing it's not a white nationalist thing or a hateful thing which is which you is give people a lot of ammo though you were talking about gay people getting married uh -huh. and your line was like i don't want them getting married. and and other people say i don't care what you do as long as you do it in your bedroom right and you said i don't even want you doing it in your bedroom yeah i think it's gross what goes on there and um <laughs> no i don't think they should be doing it some people's because because conservatives well, they, you were less careful on that one that was interesting what do you mean, mean less careful? Well, you did, there was no irony. You were there was less of a twinkle in your eye when you when you said that. Well, I mean, look, yeah, I make a lot of jokes online. I am ironic a lot of the time, but people can discern my real views. I'm Catholic. The Catholic view is we want to live in a decent, virtuous society where people are not doing immoral, you know, gravely sinful things. You have expressed a degree of sympathy or even common cause with avowed white nationalists. Well, I don't understand the hang up on. So why are you not a white nationalist? So aren't you? A white nationalist. I mean, why, why are you so interested in that in particular, categorizing me as that thing? Th that to me because is because that's the most prohibited part of your beliefs. What makes you Nicholas J. Fuentes, right? Right. Is the fact that you, you, there's a racial component. Right, right. Right. But Even the right wing of the Trumpers, what makes you different from them is that you talk about Jewish power, right. Right, alleged Jewish power, and black crime, and that you're talking about white, specifically white identity. I want America to work. I believe in America. America. We just got to stop immigration. That's all. Can yeah, see, he can't say it. You can't say it. He's such a pussy, dude. Wonder how different it would be if they did this on Nick's show? Yeah, of course. He is. This is why it's an issue. Like, this is where I uh, divert pathways with Louis Thoreau because, like, you're letting him do propaganda now. Like, Nick is smarter than Baked Alaska. Like, he knows how to propagandize his talking points. He recognizes that, um, you know, as long as you don't openly uh, own the white nationalist uh, rhetoric and you only say it, you only fucking say it in uh, in, in the circles that is like a appropriate and adequate, you can get away with saying shit like this. He's doing PR. He's doing marketing. But of course, when you're like that, when you're, when you're Louis Thoreau, like you have to uh, you know, you have to let him feel comfortable around you. Otherwise, he's not going to let you into his house. Can we watch you doing your show? Yes. His parents' house. Nick Sorry. told me his streams, posted on his own website, reach as many as 10,000 live viewers a night. Good evening, everybody. We're watching America First. My name is Nicholas J. Fuentes. We have a great show for you tonight. You talking is so much less interesting than the documentary. I mean, you can go watch it on your own, brother. Here, take seven days to be able to do that on your own. No, that's 10K bots, by the way. That's not real. Get the fuck out of here. Very excited to be back with you here tonight on Monday. Seems like Israel-Palestine. Though he is technically banned from most social media companies, clips from his show often go viral and are seen by millions across different platforms. When you go out there and you say, I don't care about the browning of America, and you say that there's going to be no consequences from that, that people are interchangeable, well, you're lying. He said he makes up to $4,000 per show from people who pay him to receive respond to their messages and that the donations have made him a millionaire and more than trump's is can women even yeah bro that's why he's living in his fucking mom's basement dog because he's a fucking millionaire 
uh, with 4K, uh, up to 4K in donations that he's getting. Get the fuck out of here, bro. No. So you're saying you wouldn't practice proper journalism when you'd be in his shoes, when uh, you'd be in Lewis in his shoes? When you'd be in Lewis his shoes? What? Well, you wrote that with like just an aneurysm, I think. Did you have an aneurysm midway through writing that? Or are you trying to give me an aneurysm while I'm trying to read it? What the fuck's going on? Listen, motherfucker, when you are doing quote unquote professional journalism with like out and about fucking neo Nazis, okay? When you're doing quote unquote professional journalism with neo Nazis, you need to recognize, you need to know better about what their talking points are. You need to be well armed about their talking points. And you you need to also be well armed with quick counters to said talking points. Okay, that's it. If you're not well armed, then you are going to allow uh, a neo-Nazi to do propaganda and to whitewash his own perspective to to make it seem like he's just a common sense guy. He's going to become bigger than Crowder with a Kanye cosign. No, he's not. You're fucking delusional, brother. This is precisely why you earlier said, oh, man, sometimes that's why I need to leave so I can learn more about these people. Okay, yeah, you are in the insane fucking space of online political drama. You're a 38-month subscriber, and that is precisely why I can tell that you are constantly fucking getting hammered with this kind of narrative from people like this. So it has completely warped your perspective. You you have the brain rot, okay? The average suburban white uh, mom and dad have probably, to a certain degree, uh, seen... They definitely know Tucker Carlson. They know Sean Hannity. Some of them may or may not have even seen Steven Crowder. They have no fucking clue who this dweeb loser is. Kanye West promoting him is still not going to let get him to reach a level of prominence of level of prominence of even Steven Crowder. Feel me? And Steven Crowder is not anywhere near the level of Tucker Carlson or Ben Shapiro, who is arguably bigger than Steven Crowder. Be funny, though. No, they can't. And often when they're funny, they're unintentionally funny. The real question is, can women be intentionally funny? Uh, the answer is no. But After can? nearly three hours of nonstop streaming, close to midnight. The average suburban racist dad doesn't need race lessons from this little white loser. That dad's going to tell that dipshit to go back to Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. We're like, kid, I was there. You merely read the tomes of racism. I was there when they were being written, bitch. <laughs> Nick wrapped things up. As always, I'm Nicholas J. Fuentes. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, have a great rest of your evening. Okay. Whoa. Did you enjoy that? Uh, <laughs> well, it's more enjoyable in the first hour. Baked Alaska thinks you're going to be president. Oh, yeah? Eh, I don't know about that. You'd Maybe. Like, you'd like that? I would, I would. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Who wouldn't be? Gross. Who wouldn't want to I wouldn't want No? To. Nick's political aims are supported by many in far-right circles. The neo-Nazi Daily Stormer website has repeatedly endorsed his strategy of pushing a more PR-friendly brand of white nationalism. But his main constituency has been online gamers, incels, and so-called irony bros. As soon as I saw Nick from the beginning, I was like, this guy is a, this guy is a fucking winner, dude. Like, this guy is a fucking winner, and he's going to do it. I mean, this guy knows a winner when he sees one, you know what I'm saying? Now, that guy... Takes one to no one, you know? <laughs> He's exactly the same kind of winner that Nick is, you know? God damn, brother. I hope the more you see the fucking depths of, uh, you know, political content uh, circles, the more you understand why I stay away from this shit, okay? It takes to win, you know? One of those who lent early enthusiastic support in his homemade streaming Looks show. like you, not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you haven't gotten prescription uh, optics, then yeah. I do, I too have a beard, I have hair, I'm white, wear glasses. It was a gamer named Matt Evans. You know, yeah, we look very similar here. Get a better look. Better known as Beards and Beardly. A friend and political ally of Nick's, they discussed the need for a less off putting, more optical version of white nationalism in freewheeling online conversations. We're having a lot of success politically. The message is getting out, we're waking people up. People are talking about ending democracy. Now is not the time to be fucking around and to be caught off guard because we want to be nice. Well, you know what? Sabotaging the white race and sabotaging our movement isn't nice. I'd met him briefly at AFPAC. Since then, candid footage from an anonymous source had been posted online showing him leaving the event in Nick's car and delivering what looked very much like a Nazi salute. <laughs> fucking loser. Oh, that's funny. Another grainy image suggested it might not be by mistake. 
Beardson lives in a small town in Western Kentucky. You got that off the internet? Yeah, yeah, I got How it. How much did they charge you for that? It was only like 12 bucks. I wasn't that committed to 12 the bucks? I thought it'd be more. Aw, he's a fan. Louis Thoreau is uh is very good at like fucking having these um having like a lot of the because of his apolitical content, he's very good at having a lot of people that are like Joe Rogan fans that then turn alt right, um, you know, enjoy his shit until, you know, they're confronted by him and he's like, Yeah, bro, what's up with the fucking Roman salute? More than that. <sighs> The plain T-shirt costs more than that. Oh. It must take value off it, having my face on it. How are you doing? Doing all right. Thank you, you for having us. Yeah, no problem. So, like, why do you, like, why the hell do you want to talk to me? Well, because you were at AFPAC, and um, you, you, they call you the a general in the movement. Yeah, you, they call you Nick's general, one of his trust. Damn, dude, homie, homie should have never fucking shaved the the beard. Now I get why he was beard beardson. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> he looks gross. Lieutenants? I don't know about that, but... This is so weird talking to you with three faces of me staring <laughs> back. We're trying to get a sense of the movement, so-called dissident right, whatever you want to call that thing yeah. that you're a part of that used to be called white nationalism, but I guess that's not a term that's in favor anymore. No, I mean, that's I'm not a white nationalist or anything. You I mean, kind I'm, of have I, to say that. I, to no, be optical? No, I'm not, I'm not even a political guy. No, I'm a gamer, dude. I play video games. Is that the line you're taking? Because it is a political movement. Like, the Knicks outfit is explicitly political. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm just friends with the guy. Can we? Are we all right to go in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank on. you. I'm just a gamer, dog. This is your new place you just moved in? I literally just, like, three hours ago picked this place. So. Oh, okay. How would you characterize what you do? I'm uh, a comedian. Kind of a troll, could we say? Uh, yeah, man. yeah. I saw the white nationals infiltrated the gamers. Wait, what do you mean, dude? Bro, this is no longer fucking 2014, okay? That, that was when the white nationalists... We're infiltrating the gaming space. We are in a very different environment now, okay? That is no longer... No, no, no. It's no longer the case. Like, there was a point in time... There was a point in time when, like, I think that was the only type of politics, okay? That was the only type of politics that popped off in the gaming spaces, despite the fact that, like, the, the broad base of gamers is a, is a very diverse one, right? But that's not the case. Dude, I mean, look at XQC, okay? And look at his fucking politics. Come on. Arguably a fucking gamer. Like, that's crazy. If you think that that's, like, all, all gamers are like that, you're out of your mind. Uh, I mean, as far as, like, I don't know, my vague political beliefs or whatever, I mean, I'm a punk rock kid, you know? I look at whatever is anti-authoritarian. I've always been a guy that goes against the grain. You know, making edgy jokes on the internet is punk rock, you know what I mean? But <laughs> we're not going <laughs> to... Yeah, dude, it's so punk rock, brother. Dude, there is nothing more punk rock than, you know, having the political opinions of your grandfather. What you guys simply don't understand is that it's incredibly punk rock to be terrified of living in a fucking city, okay? It's so punk rock to just, like, use anonymous accounts to say, like, unhinged racist shit. And then the moment that someone, like, confronts you in the real world, you say, I'm not racist, I'm just a gamer. There's nothing more punk rock than that. Okay. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. There's nothing more punk rock than like having a, uh, having a dude in your community go and like try to have gay sex with Paul Pelosi only to call him gay when he fails to execute Nancy Pelosi. Like that's, that's how punk rock it is. That's why anytime one of these fucking losers actually makes the news for finally, uh, you know, following through on the desires that they talk about in fucking discord and shit, uh, they're immediately outed as a pathetic fucking loser. And even the Nazis that were egging him on in their fucking social circles will turn around and be like, no, 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 that guy's gay. He's not us. He's not our guy. We're totally different than that guy. That's punk rock. That's straight up punk shit. I'm going to be silly about it and pretend that there's no racial dimension to what you're involved in. Well, yeah, I mean, of course, like, you have, I mean, you have to be honest about it and have a conversation about it, but it's not some, like, racial hatred, you know? But that's the way it always comes across, right? Anytime you even bring up the idea of race or you talk about racial division in this country, then obviously it must mean that you hate all the other races. That's the way that it's perceived every single time, and that's not true. So uh, how was AFPAC? It was fun. Speeches were cool, I guess. Can I get something out of the way? Yeah, go ahead. So on the day... On on the last day I was there, you were leaving with Nick in a car, and you did a Nazi salute. Oh, I didn't mean to. I was just trying to wave. Oh, man. I'm, I'm fucking punk rock, dude. It's just a meme, dog. Punk rock. I'm uh, just fucking... I was just doing punk rock shit. <laughs> fucking idiot. Oh, I love this shit, dude. It does make me happy that, like, these fucking losers can't openly showcase their, their uh, true political 
uh, perspective, though. That does make me happy. It was quite clearly a Nazi salute. It wasn't a Nazi salute. Should we look, can we look at it? Trying to do like a, like a, you know, one of those. Have you seen it? Yeah, it looked kind of bad, I'll be honest with you. It did look bad. I'm, dude, I'm not a Nazi, man. Like, this is, if this is what it's going to be, like, I'm not going to. No, but we got to, I mean, I, I would look like a chump if I didn't bring it up, right? Wouldn't I? I mean, I think you look like a chump bringing it up. Do you really think I'm a Nazi? No, do I think See, you're... look, right there. You see how I'm going like that? Like a, like a military salute. That one, but you did it twice. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it. At oh, man, that sucks, dude. What? Stop. What? That's crazy. Dude, that's awesome. That's fucking awesome. Oh, no. He, like, watched Joe Rogan videos talking about fucking Louis Theroux, became a fan, and then having his fucking, you know, favorite documentarian, which I'm sure he hasn't really watched a lot of his shit anyway, but, like, you know, that guy who you're wearing the face of on your fucking shirt coming to your goddamn bumfuck you know, Kentucky house and confronting you about being a Nazi when you're in the car, when you're in a fucking rental with a whole bunch of other Nazis. You're at an event whose entire kind of raison d'etre really is to say, hey, you know what? We're not the alt right. We don't want anything to do with those guys. Yeah. Um, we, we don't want swastikas. We don't want any of that right. Hitler esoteric. Right. You know, in a sense, you had one job. Right. And, and you failed. <laughs> Oh, no. He said, come on, dog. The entire purpose of America First is to say that, like, we're not like the other Nazis, and you still fucking failed on that front. Because you did a two Nazi salutes. I did not do a Nazi salute. Well, it looked like, you know that word optics? Yeah. That term of, like, um... Oh, yeah, I'm very familiar with the term optics. Yeah. You know what else I'm familiar with is the term bad journalism. <laughs> <You> should... <laughs> Oh no. Oh no, dude. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. Uh get the fuck out of my house. I'm not in your house. Yeah, well you can leave because I don't want this interview's done. C can we de-escalate, no. please? No. Are you sitting there you're sit there gonna sit there and say I'm doing a Nazi salute? I asked get, you if you were mic. it was quite evidently you look like get one. Get the fuck out of my house. Are you kidding me? <laughs> when, when, when did you lose your sense of humor? When did you lose your sense of integrity? That's it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. By the way, this is why Louis Thoreau doesn't do fucking it's true, bad journalism. This is not how you keep these dudes on the interview. No, but it's good to do this. You're you're I am in disagreement. Okay. I I, I disagree with you. No. If he does this, Nick Fuentes doesn't give him a fucking uh, moment to talk, okay? And even when he's calling him out, even when he's calling him out, he's doing it in a way that, like, puts him in opposition with Nick Fuentes and what Nick Fuentes seeks to achieve, which is to, uh, you know, this is what happened to Tate. You're boring. Yeah. He is trying to put a rift in between him and Nick Fuentes by assuming Nick Fuentes' uh, argument. Remember, that's what he's doing in that situation. Not like he said, you're a Nazi. He said, you fucked up on the optics if your organization's goal is to, uh, you know, show everyone that you are not like the other Nazis. Bye-bye. How about you go back to the UK and sit on the front of the <laughs> Ejected by a surprisingly thin-skinned troll, what was most striking was that someone who gave Nazi salutes was also offended by being asked about them, but we weren't finished yet. <laughs> What's going on, my dudes? Beardson was about to hit back on his one-man streaming channel. I wanted to go live to talk about my, my latest experience that I just had. Literally just had it just a second ago. And if you're, if you're watching this, Louie, which I'm sure you probably are, yeah, go fuck yourself. You're a disingenuous hag. Oh, hey, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a phone call right now. I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Hey, I'm watching you. Yeah? Are you? We were about to have a conversation. I asked you a, a straightforward question. Like, how did you expect that that would happen? <laughs> because of... What the fuck? You went directly to the hug box? Oh, no, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, no. That's crazy. Oh, brother, you are looking bad. Not that you... I mean, not that it's something new to you. Holy fuck, this dude, <laughs> everything is bad here. It wasn't because you're the only person that has ever once said that to me about that. I'm not dealing with this. I'm not dealing with your pretentiousness, and I'm not dealing with your slant. Bro, big homie fucking hit the Hitler salute on the, the JFK style motorcade, okay? And that's anything, that's just a self report at that point. Like, you're the only person that's ever asked me about my Hitler saluting ways. Like, that's crazy. He's getting one guide by his only guy. 
okay? You can either listen to what I have to say or you can go fuck yourself. Well, I understand you're annoyed now. Uh, why don't you explain to me what your views are? Why don't, you, why don't you explain to me how you're a total fucking scumbag? How about that? I'm not dumb. I'm not an idiot, Louis. You're not goading a fucking <laughs> interview out of me. You are a piece of shit, and I don't like you. Listen, you're involved in a movement that's been characterized by its enemies, white nationalists. I here, here, hey, Louis, go fuck yourself. I have nothing enough to say to you. Eat shit. Bye bye. Oh man, you should have taken the shirt off. I mean, we already know he's not the best at optics, but the optics of you getting owned and, and sunned by the dude whose face you're wearing on your chest, that's real bad optics. Like, I mean, that's just like, plus you look triggered by a, an audience that only fucking cares about that. You know what I mean? So, you know, your, your fucking troll fan base could be like, oh my God, you got triggered. You, you must be, you know, you're pressed. You're triggered. Guess what? Louie, my country's better than yours. My friends are cooler than you. I'm cooler than you. I'm tougher than you. I'm smarter. I'm stronger. Oh my God, <laughs> dude, I swear to God, if Andrew Tate had not done kickboxing and he kept doing chess and didn't actually fucking, you know, develop pectorals and pec definition, literally this is him. Okay. Straight up. Also bald. Okay. I mean, this is the, the way that these guys fucking behave is so insecure, so childish. Like, how the fuck can you not see it? I'm really the total package, and you're weak, and you suck. Go fuck yourself. Also, he has, like, a foot on you, homie. I, I'm just saying. Like, that's... Oh, God. And a head of hair. Why did he drag the UK into this? Yeah, he made some strong points in the beginning when he said, my country is better than yours. But, like, that's it. That's where it started and ended, you know? <laughs> Beardson's machismo seems... Bro, imagine losing to the United States of America. Can you imagine being like, like having just a century of like training programs, farming programs, an actual viable, you know, sports league that people watch, enjoy, okay? Having athletes play all around the world in the best fucking clubs and all to come back to like, uh, you know, the national team and promote England and then losing to the United States by, you know, getting tied. That, that is a loss. If you're England, a 0-0 zero, zero outcome to the U.S. is a loss, okay? Straight up. 0-0 zero, zero is not a loss. We won. It's coming home. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, disappointment is coming home, okay? Haha, <laughs> it was an L, though USA has been doing well past 20 years. Okay. <sighs> it's not. Typical American coping hard. Whoa, that's crazy. It was a 0-0, zero, zero, you silly goose, during the group stage. Exactly. Loot. It's a loss. If you can't defeat the United States of America's fucking team, you've lost. You can't be England and not be able to defeat the United States of America's soccer team. Doesn't even call it football. Calls it soccer. Okay. Literally had one person in the entire fucking 26 person lineup that had actually been to a World Cup. One person on the U.S. team had been to a World Cup prior. One. 26 motherfuckers, only one had been to a World Cup prior. If you can't beat that team, what the fuck are you doing? Brazil is going to drop eight on you, okay? That's insane. That's crazy. You brought soccer to a football match that's literal cheats. I want a rematch. That's a loss. I'm just calling it what it is. That is, of course, if England lasts long enough to face Brazil, of course. <laughs> Uh, our manager is the Bin Laden of football. What? Symptomatic of America first and the far right male persona generally. Given the pervasive misogyny of the movement, I was curious to meet a woman in any way connected with America first. Hello, Nick Fuentes. This is Dr. Milfi. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Brittany Venti is a sometime friend of Nick Fuentes and Beards and Beardley. He's like, they see racism. Gareth Southgate is a football terrorist. Okay, uh, like these people are. He has he has brought over the the fucking loser brigade. Like even worse people than before. Um, so much so that now I'm I'm trying to figure out what the fuck's going on here. What is this? Why is he a football terrorist? People in the UK were joking that they weren't sure how many points they'd win by. So because of that, zero zero is a total loss. Yeah, they literally were fucking stating that uh, that the the <coughs> they were acting like fucking England was gonna win four one. Wasn't that like what was trending on fucking Twitter? 4-1? Yeah, they were saying 4-1 England. That's crazy to me, okay? England acted like the GOP the day before the midterms. Yeah, they were like, uh, it's gonna be a fucking... It's fine. I'm okay with being hated. I'm always hated. It makes no difference to me. What do I have to lose by telling the truth? Gross.
I'd arranged to see her at her home in New York. Hello, I'm Louie. How do you do? May I come in? So this is where you do your work. Yeah. Dude, you guys are so horny. It's disgusting. Ew. Actually, fucking yikes, dude. Chat, fucking conduct yourselves, dude. Bro, for chat, literally, it's just like, be a woman, breathe, and talk politics. Doesn't matter if you're like a fucking Nazi. Doesn't matter if you identify and al align with Nazis like 75% of the time. Chat literally is just like, oh, dude, dude, she's a woman and likes politics, okay? You're fucking gross, dude. At least there's like, you know, there... <laughs> Like, that's crazy to me. She's completely unattractive, too, on top of everything else. And you've got a pink purple MAGA hat up there. Are you a Trump fan? I like the fact that he trolls. That's one of my favorite part about him. He lowered taxes, and he's kind of like... He lowered taxes? Bro, you live in a fucking one-bedroom in New York. What do you mean? What do you mean he lowered taxes? Not for you, dumbass! <laughs> I like the fact that he lowered taxes. Like, you <laughs> Just a fucking idiot, dude. Oh, that's awesome. Um, provocative. Kind of like how my style is. It reminds me of that. You don't mind getting a pink mug, do you? I like a pink mug. Okay. That's very progressive. I was curious how Britney had got involved in the far Yo, bro, she's hot, what do you mean? And where she stood with it now. She is fucking so gross. You're I don't find her attractive stuff. at all. I don't know why you guys, I mean, some of you do. Like, I, maybe it's because, like, I know enough about her political views that it's just like i can't overcome that like oh right when they were chanting um you will not replace us and jews will not replace us i didn't even know fully the details about charlottesville i was told a few days ahead of time by a friend like you need to go to this event you need to go to this event but you what know? about the message and the whole jews will not replace us chant i a sense in which you were <laughs> like finding your community online oh definitely for sure <sighs> i thought it was so funny it was just so wild back then then, like the wild west from being inside the movement somewhat right which we could say you were right yeah i've seen i've i've been able to observe a lot of it what's your take on what um america first is about and what nick fuentes is about back in the day i definitely thought more of it was joking than not but then it became not a joke like for example when they say like don't race mix and you have to be like none at all like that type of thing yeah i do remember when the all right women complained that the men treated them like shit hey man that's your bed sleep in it you know you made it or when it's like about how all women are whores it's like no that's actually not tongue-in-cheek like initially thought <laughs> she she was like oh these guys are so funny when they were like lol don't do miscegenation and i was like lol they're so funny and then i was like oh wait they're serious like what the fuck what is funny about the first thing because i thought like oh well like i'm not the modern woman i definitely want a husband and i'm conservative like there should be no reason they have a problem with me but no it didn't matter not good enough so i realized that when i saw more chance simps are over this girl is that what you want to be chat yeah even fucking nazi groiped up uh losers are like yeah she sucks but we got idiots in the chat who were like oh, i can fix her like how horrible they were to me and by horrible you mean insulting um harassing try to report you get your stuff taken down i think the worst thing i've seen is is the bits and thing have you seen that yeah i did see it once so would you be comfortable showing it to me don't feel any pressure to do it yeah i mean you sure yeah Brittany, if i ever see you i'm gonna rape in person and I'm what married. the fuck i'm going to fucking put my dick in your fucking asshole I'm Okay, I did not see that coming. Uh, sorry about that. Trigger warning. Uh, no matter how fucking gross of a person she is, she does not deserve that. That is disgusting. Holy fuck. Yikes. Okay. I'm going to remove your pants. I'm going to remove my pants. I'm going to stick my dick in your ass. I'm going to rape you because you're such a dumb fucking bitch that you do not understand. You, you have involved yourself into a community that you do not understand. And for that, you're going to get anally raped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck, dude? I mean, I get Ugh. that there's uh, a sense of humor with the obscenity of it. Oh, dude. Oh, my gosh. She is such a fucking pick me. It's crazy, bro. Holy fuck. That's crazy. What humor? This person is literally saying, what the fuck? This person is saying they're going to fuck your ass. They're going to rape you in the ass, dude. What the fuck? Bro, what? That's insane. That is insane. Stop saying she's fucking gaslit by the right. Not fucking gaslit. She, she is choosing to stay on the right. 
even when they're literally like saying the most unhinged shit. She wants friends so bad she will wave away everything. Like, but it doesn't make it okay to say that because it's so like extremely inappropriate and disrespectful. I feel like disrespectful is too nice of a word. Bro, there is literally no fucking moment in that commentary. He's a white knight like you. Shut the fuck up, Kevin Heckart. There is no fucking moment. First of all, I will never white knight this person, okay? I have values that I consider to be fucking, uh, you know, I, I, I think certain things are completely insane, like what we just experienced. Okay, that's a that's a direct threat of violence towards someone. Okay, like that's an actual threat of violence. She's underplaying it for some weird reason because they're just so goddamn fucking brain broken. But it is mind boggling to me that like I, I can't comprehend how she is surrounded by people like this who are actively threatening her. Okay, who are actively threatening her in this way. They're the grossest, sweatiest fucking losers. And she's so fucking stupid that she's like, well, you know, this is like kind of funny, but like missing the mark a little bit, maybe a little inappropriate. Like, what do you mean? That's like an active threat. I just think it's because his buddies didn't like me. So it's like, oh, you can't like Brittany Venti. So got to turn. I think that's what it is because like I said, they have a problem with women, no matter what flavor of woman you are. The guy who was saying that was the beard, beardy, beardless, bearded wonder, whatever the fuck his name, I already forgot. The guy that Louis uh, talked to prior, like right before she, he talked to her. The attacks on Britney by her former friends seemed to have opened her eyes to the misogyny of the movement she'd been part of. But it was striking that she still made light of the hatefulness of the anti-Semitic chanting at Charlottesville. Experts increasingly view the greatest terrorist threat in the U.S. As to be crocodiles? Like, what's going on right now? <laughs> weird, weird entry to the fucking weird segue to the next uh, next conversation on the documentary. Coming from the far right and highlight the global reach of the message. It was after a 2019 attack in Christchurch, New Zealand, in which 51 Muslims were killed by a terrorist steeped in the culture of the Internet that Baked Alaska had released a surprising video. Today I want to talk to you guys about the New Zealand shooting. It was so obvious that this guy was radicalized by the alt-right and became a right-wing extremist. Everything he does is the 101 playbook for right-wing extremists, and I know because I've hung around these guys in the past. What? We need to start educating people the difference between internet culture and reality before things go way out of hand like they did in New Zealand. But within months, he'd reverted back to his far-right positions, embracing a full-time career as a live-streaming internet troll. Increasingly, I'd wondered about the danger of internet hate translating into real-world harm. With that in mind, I'd arranged to meet him in Tampa, Florida, where he was streaming. I was hoping to understand the dark seduction of the online community, knowing it would involve another dose of highly upsetting content. Shout out to my right-wing nuts. Guys... We're gonna have some fun later tonight. Don't miss it. Louie, are you in the chat? Louie! Louie! Hey, nice to see you. Yeah, nice How's to see you. How's it going? Good. We're live here, guys. Say hello, Louie Thoreau. I, I told him we had a special guest today. But and that was me? That was you, yeah. yeah. With Baked were two other lower-profile far-right streamers, one going by lols, another woozer. How's it going? Nick and Baked's documentary maker friend, Stephen Martinez, was also along for the ride. Okay, so... You're on 300... You've been streaming for three hours? Yeah. And you got 331 yeah, people yeah. watching live? Yeah. How, so, and it's on YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. I thought you'd been deplatformed from YouTube. Yeah, I have. So how are you... I, mean, I just make new channels all the time. Wow! Doomer Squidward send $100, Yoba. Let's go! Thank you so much! O7's in chat! Doomer Squidward, thank you, homie! Fate streams are how he makes his income. They involve him provoking passers-by. Step back, get the fuck out of here. This is my production, not yours. Spurred on by viewers who donate money to play racist or otherwise provocative music and messages on a speaker around his neck. Is this, uh, is this one of those uh, German military what, marching songs? Yes. Yeah. With Nazi connotations? Uh, I think it's... I don't know if it has Nazi connotations. 
It's just a nice German song, you know. I had the uncomfortable feeling my presence was making him more money, so I decided to keep in the background as much as possible. Hey, we got some Cubans out here. Mexico, USA, baby. Yeah, Trump, Trump 2024. Yeah. Let's vote for Trump. What was racist? Calling us Cubans. I asked, I asked. No, you could have asked. I asked. I said, are you Cuban? Hey, I swear they're donating a bad song right now. Saying the N word. Much of the content played on Bates' speaker was the most offensive racial language. Chill, please chill out with that. Bro, this is the saddest existence. I'm sorry. This is straight up the fucking saddest existence to be. He attempted the grip by pretending to be reformed and selling anti-racist stuff to try and rehabilitate the far right. When he realized that wasn't profitable, he went right back to being a far right grifter. Please chill out with that. They seem to enjoy playing at best risque and then sometimes outright think, racist yeah. material. Is that bad? Yeah. What's that about? It's comedy. It's edgy humor. They play whatever they can to make us uncomfortable. It's not a cross section of like the broader society, is it? Like it's almost like a self-selected community of hard right trolls not everyone yes. is right wing though it's not really but more than half of it has been extreme racial abuse or extreme racial content anonymous and three dollars louis basically we just hate bigots and nagars it's not so much a right wing left wing thing it's like a human versus subhuman thing oh my God. you know oh man um okay let's see <laughs> Is it the fact that it's so horrible like the what's coming in does that ever make you think um maybe you're doing something wrong <laughs> <laughs> what a question bro come on dude that's no that's not even fire editing they've probably been fucking pumping that shit non-stop really because we live in a world where you can't hear any of this language it's all extremely censored it's all you know so taboo and so forth yeah it's called basic human dignity you fucking idiot the problem with these idiots is that like oh god they run into the fucking mistake of thinking that everyone else is like them okay that's the issue they think everyone else is like them but they are holding back because they're afraid of other people like they're afraid of being banned or they they're afraid of the rules and and laws when like a lot of that stuff is just empathy okay it's just covered on on the first introduction to humanity okay it's just like most people are not gonna fucking see a group of of you know latino people and immediately be like cubans you're Cubans, right? Like, that's wild. That's like a wild fucking thing. Like, you're you're jumping to conclusions. Like, why the fuck are you just... Like, it's, it's a crazy thing. And um, the, the reality is that, like, these people cannot look beyond their fucking horse blinders. What, look, the, the, this dumbass said, well, it's Florida. Brother, what do you think? You think all fucking Hispanic people in Florida are Cubans? Are you insane? I lived in Florida. I can tell you that you get your fucking ass beat if you tell a Puerto Rican person that they're Cuban, okay? And vice versa. Like, that's crazy. Anyway... This dude was trying to be a sad boy rapper in 2013, 2015 and hard switched to races live streams. And when that didn't work out, he went back to. Don't do that. As the evening wore on, Baked did more stunts with strangers. His stream, a queasy mix of playfulness. I just got a kiss on the fucking lips. Accompanied by racist messages paid for by donors on his speaker. Why are they playing this shit? Oh no, oh no. It seemed, in a way, a distillation of the far right internet impulse. Shock and offense driven by the whims of anonymous trolls and an influencer looking for clicks. You don't know me. You guys are fucking retards. He knows. You're, you're not the arbiter of truth here, bitch, okay? As we headed to a final location, they talked creates... unguardedly about me. You know, they, they manipulate and act like they're interested in me as a streamer, but whenever I show them good streams, they're like, they just want to talk about, like, race they, they want to talk about all their buzz topics to like make us look bad bro your dog your live stream i i feel like at that point his audience is like no nah, dog we are racist right I've like they have to be going yeah bro because like you know we're donating five dollars to you to say the n-word from your tts okay like no nah, like what, what do you mean dude in the early hours of the morning i'd seen more than enough I decided to challenge Baked about the potentially lethal consequences of his far-right beliefs by using his own words against him. Okay, let's finish this. Okay. Yes. 
In 2019, you said um, you'd recently left the alt-right and regretted ever contributing anything to that culture. Mm -hmm. You said I was just... So what does this have to do with live streaming? You said I was just... I thought you were interested in live streaming. I am. No, you're just interested in your bullshit little agenda. No, this is a quote from no. you. I was just a normal guy who liked memes and I got radicalized. No, and then that, you said that's about bullshit. your alt-right career... No, it no, been no, no, a no. pretty big disaster, to be honest. No, 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 no. Your point was that in the aftermath of 51 people being killed, uh, Muslim people at prayer. Hugh Jordy just made the worst apology video I don't, think it's good. I don't support history. violence. Yeah, Louis. People still Do you, talking about that. Can I make the that? bigger point, though, it, which is that many people would see the language of you know racial division as um, contributing to a climate where violent acts flourish, right? You said uh, it. It had been a pretty big no, here, disaster. Here you go honest. with the manipulating again. It's not. I'm here you, you a go. Quote to respond here you go to. with the manipulating again. Okay, so what's no, your point? No, no. You say you say. Oh, it's not a hit piece. I want to know about streaming. You don't give a fuck about streaming. This is part. No, I told it's you, not. It's all right. No, you said it's all. You said it. You went straight. No, question. you went straight to trying to call. Late. He's not. I don't think he's just sweating. I think he's also like drunk or something. Probably. People, me, and America First as white nationalists, light, and all this dumb shit. And it's just like everyone can see through your fucking Those gay agenda. No, you're a piece of shit. Dude. I gave you a chance. You're anti-Christian, you're anti-white, you're a fucking punk, you're a lying piece of shit, and that's all you do. I tried to give you a chance to be real and genuine, but you're not a real human being. No, you're not capable of that, Louis. Why don't you apologize for your fucking ancestors from thousands of years ago? Because you're white, Louis. Aren't you? Are you aren't you white? Yeah. Oh, why don't so why don't you apologize for who you are? Because you're a disgrace. Why am I a disgrace? Because you're white. Apparently, we should be guilty. We should feel terrible for being white, right? We we can't have a majority of white people because we'd have a great country with low crime. God forbid that. Why don't you just um? Isn't it all it, like? Isn't it basically white nationalism? Oh wow! There we go. There it comes out. If Louis Thoreau was like interested in learning about streaming, I don't think he'd go to fucking you know 300 viewer Andy who has to like make new YouTube accounts every time he tries to live stream on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like, you probably go to someone else. Like, you probably go to, like, Pokemon or some shit, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, man, he wants to learn about your white nationalist roots, brother. That's it. It's so funny, though, that they're, like, they're so bent the moment that you fucking ask them about their perspective. The moment that you ask them, it's like, bro, you are you love saying it. Why is it that the moment that someone from the outside of your group looks in for a moment and goes, hey, that's kind of weird dude that's kind of odd what's going on with that what, what's up with your donos what's up why aren't you moderating that shit you know what i mean like all of a sudden it's like ah ah stop would you be in a louis throw dog about live streaming i don't think he's interested in that like i'll be real uh, that's not offensive to you is it no, it's, 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 you're a liar i mean you the are gay agenda no i'm not i think everyone should be able to stand up for their culture that's Absolutely. my point it's like why so you think but, it's got but a negative your, your connotation but it's it a does in a it descriptive does. sense it's accurate you promote white racial loyalty and a white no, racial wh consciousness. white racial consciousness mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely it's semantics in the end. He likes free speech, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. So what do you think of Baked Alaska exactly. now that you've hung out with me for a couple of days? I think you're obviously a talented broadcaster and, and streamer. And I also think that parts of what you do I find deeply poisonous, right? And I think that um, it's anti-Semitic and it's racist and, and that's what I think. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, I'm not a white nationalist. Dude, I got so it. You got to get that out of your head. Stop believing the lies. Bates' political self-labeling was, in the end, immaterial. His record of racist, homophobic and misogynistic views spoke for itself in the vast digital catalogue of the internet. Elevating the interests of white racial identity above all else in America and viewing it exclusively as under threat. consider what's happening right now in America as anything other than a genocide being perpetrated against the white man. And if you're one of those people that says that being pro-white is racist, is white supremacist, white nationalist, guess what? You're on the side of white genocide. <laughs> in a world where everyone can have their own platform, it may have been inevitable that the voices of the political fringe would be more amplified and would influence more people. 20 years ago, Nick Fuentes would have been an almost why are they so scared of the label though? Like I understand optics for bigger people, but why are the randoms afraid? What do you mean? The moment that you are called and, and effectively labeled a white nationalist, it's done. 
even the most racist hick from Alabama is going to look at you and go, oh, no, brother, I don't want none of that. That shit's crazy, you know? There's a reason why the Klan's members wear hoods, my friend, okay? Like, the moment that you get clapped up, the moment that you're, like, correctly identified <sighs> is the moment that you lose a big chunk of your uh, uh, capability of promoting your ideology to a broader audience. No, they don't even care about white nationalists anymore. They only care about the word Nazi. No, they, they still do. No, they do. That's why they say they're Christian nationalists. Or that's why Nick Fuentes says he's just a nationalist. Like the reason why they say that is because they don't want uh, the association, even though it's the exact same thing. They're just trying to basically rebrand it into something a little bit different so that they can like sucker a couple more people who would otherwise be open-minded to that kind of ideology without openly, uh, you know, signing up for it until it's far too late for them to turn around. How is it that Americans are scared of it, but European fascists openly embrace being called Nazis and white nationals? And what's the cultural difference? Um, there isn't like a lot of, uh, there isn't the same kind of, I guess, robust history of ideological movements that are called and tailored as it is. In many ways, I find them over. Invisible figure. Beat up, betrayed, spit on, stepped on for decades. Now, thanks to the internet, his message reaches young people in homes around the world. We're not going anywhere. His avowed aim to undermine democracy and advance the power of white men, using irony to mask an ambition that is deadly serious. There is nothing that can stop an idea whose time has come. And America first, the time has come now.